911 emergency. I was the call taker that night shift. So when the call came in. She's hysterical and she says there's a kidnapping. Please. I'm, okay, I'm sending an officer over, okay? Please. Do you know how long she's been gone? No, I don't. Please, we just got out and she ran here. Oh my God, please. The note said, if you do anything, if police come, if FBI come, uh, your daughter will die. Mm -hmm. You called 911. Yes, I did. I had to do something. I had to take action. And I mean, all this happened in a matter of moments. Patsy calls 911 at 5.52 a.m. and the first officer arrives at 5.55. Wow, that's fast. I know, that's really fast. More friends start to arrive and more officers start to arrive. So at this point, lots of people are at the house. We called friends for help at that point. Your daughter is gone. Desperate. She's in the hands of a madman. My phone rang, Pam. They've got her. What do you mean they've got her? They've kidnapped John Binet. She's gone. What was the atmosphere like as you sat and waited? Well, it was, it was awful. First of all, we didn't know whether the kidnapper was going to call that day because the note said, I will call you tomorrow. Get plenty of rest. I was deathly afraid that tomorrow was, in fact, the 27th. You lose all perception of time, of place. You've just been dealt a horrible, crushing blow. The police came in just before 6 o'clock in the morning on the 26th of December thinking that we had a missing child. They go into this beautiful house with 18 or so rooms. And they did a cursory search of the residence and they didn't find anything. The mistakes they made were outrageous. They were mystifying. They were mistake after mistake after mistake. The police did a terrible terrible job securing that scene. And if you don't secure the scene, you don't get good evidence. People were streaming through that house. They were in the kitchen. They were in the living room. There were some friends of Patsy's that were helping her wipe up the kitchen. There could have been fingerprints there. You had friends that were windexing the sink and washing dishes. And People were making toast in the kitchen and Yes, a kidnapping is a crime scene, but, but we were so focused on getting JonBenet back. That was the task. What we have learned is that everyone should have been sequestered into an area so that people weren't roaming around the house. And that was a mistake on my part. The reason I didn't is because these people were the Ramsey's support system. There was no information at all to indicate the family was involved at that point. It was a crime scene, and it was getting contaminated. The note was being passed around and reviewed by all of their friends. Of all of the evidence left behind, that ransom note is the most baffling. Number one, it is too damn long. A ransom note is not that long. A ransom note says, I have your child, I want a million dollars, I'll call you later. This is the infamous ransom note. It begins, Mr. Ramsey, listen carefully. It was three pages long, and some people believe that a kidnapper that was truly kidnapping somebody would have written a very direct and to the point ransom note. Three pages? What was that about? That ransom note was the war and peace of ransom notes. Who would write a three page rambling ransom note other than someone trying to cover their tracks, who was in the house. It's the weirdest ransom note I've ever read. You will withdraw $118,000 from your account. $100,000 will be in $100 bills and the remaining $18,000 in $20 bills. You think about this number and how is it relevant? And it's relevant because John Ramsey got a bonus from his company 
for $118,000. How many people knew that? I'm gonna guess not a lot of people. Our grandpa compared the note to some examples that he found in movies. John? The movie Ransom was playing in Boulder. I have your son. Oh, Jesus. I want two million dollars. Oh, God. In that particular movie, a fat cat industrialist, his son was kidnapped. There's a lot of the same verbiage in this note as was in even the note that was written in that particular movie. If we catch you talking to a stray dog, she dies. If you talk to anyone, I don't care if it's a Pekingese pissing against the lamppost, the girl dies. You and your family are under constant scrutiny as well as the authorities. Don't try to grow a brain, John. Do not attempt to grow a brain. Our guys are real watcher of that particular type of movies. Dan, what does this tell you in terms of evidence? First of all, that someone felt comfortable spending the time writing this long note in the house. And whoever wrote the note is about to go from a kidnapping suspect to a murder suspect. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.